Can Sheikh please share yeah. insights yeah. of the breath to carry the power of who to the soul and the power of the Sheikh's Nazar that constricts the Murid? How to keep in a position to carry more potently? Yeah, I can just house it in Shaitan. The nafas al rahma and the importance of the breath. That the whole tariqah is based on the breath which is ajeeb that no shaykh talks about the breath. I mean khushdar dam and consciousness of your breath and every section of the Naqshbandi book, every grand shaykh first comment is the way is based on your nafas. That understanding your qudra, your power, your gift from Allah is your breath. Before anything we want and anything we're praying for, Allah said, have you thanked me for your breath? So then this nafas that coming in can be a tremendous might and power. This nafas that coming in from Bahr Qudra is a power. They were taught on how to unlock the reality of their breath and they pull the who out of the atoms. That every atom in its nucleus has a secret of who and it's the qudra and the energy. Like now they're making ships that go out very far, they can't give them gas so they make them atomic ships. They have their own reactor because how are you going to put uh, on an icebreaker out mm. in the middle of the ocean and keep refueling it? Mm. So Allah is giving the same, so how are you going to keep refueling? You can't mm. be sort of checking in five minutes for refueling. So means then Allah ignite within them how to pull the power out of anything around them. So the breath most powerful. We said before it's like a Wi-Fi that emanating throughout creation. Every photon carrying that reality. So divine Wi-Fi that broadcasting all upon this creation. Every flower needs it, every bug needs it, every animate and inanimate object is in need of it because of its atomic reality. Within it has the secret of who. And that's why all the tariqahs they have the zikr of who built into their awrat. So when they're breathing and they're unlocking and training themselves on how to breathe, they visualize the breath of light that comes in and asking Allah to take out all the negativity. And as they're practicing and making their tafakkur the more they efface and become nothing and nothing and realize I'm truly nothing but an oppressor to myself. La ilaha anta subhanika inni kuntum min al dhalimeen. There's glory be to Allah and I'm an oppressor to myself. As Allah's watching that you really believe that you're nothing, your breath and your breathing will become more powerful. So it's not something that, oh Allah, I want to unlock the who. No, you just keep breathing and practicing, breathing and practicing until Allah determines you're sincere. And there's a system in which they hold their pulse. So that their hand and their finger is cooling an energy. And for many years they made fun of us, they said, oh look he's doing like the Buddhist. <laughs> no, they stole it from us, they stole from Prophet Anyone wants to know spiritual growth, go Google baby's hands, mm. baby's hands. You see every baby's hand is locked like this, they're like this all day long, little babies. And they grow from birth to one year like woo, the, the fastest growth that a human will grow is from their birth to their first and second birthday. How this little thing popped up like this because they're cooling their energy. Allah inspire them, call upon your energy. So all day long they're making tafakkur and muraqabah, that's why you think they're sleeping and they're holding their hand. And the energy is coming, energy is coming and they're growing, growing at a speed that Allah wants them to grow. So that they can survive upon this earth. So everyone's doing it except the people who don't know why they're, do, why they're meditating. Then they begin to teach you everything has an energy. As soon as your thumb is your identity and each one has a unique print in the spiritual realm, your thumb is what identifies your soul's light in an ocean of lights that are all in one. Because the ocean of light we're all one, nobody knows who you are, I am, we're in one ocean. But this print knows exactly your identity. As soon as this print appears it pulls you from that reality and begin to send the energy that's necessary for your being. As soon as you touch this finger, shahada finger with the thumb, 
you're cooling from Bahr Qudra, your energy that I'm in need of more energy to come to me, you're signalling an energy to come. And then from that like a satellite is directed to you and begin to send you more of your Qudra, more than you need on a daily basis. So when they sit to make tafakkur they understood that they can, and you don't have to do like this, you just hold their hand and they're calling upon a signal and an energy they're coming and then Allah make them to become more aware of their heart signal, that they begin to feel the, the movement of their heart. When they meditate with their hands open the meditation is like flowing everywhere, they're just flying around lost like a kite in the air. As soon as they put their hand to their thumb they're back on the focus of their heart. Why? Because قَالْ بِالْمُؤْمِنْ بَيْتُ اللَّهِ they, they want to stay focused on the house of Allah So it means they just learn how to be sincere. Allah will begin to open their breath where when they breathe they feel now an energy coming like a fire. They breathe like a fire, like a dragon. So in the spiritual world the dragons are something very good for the mu'min ones. They breathe like a dragon, they bring in a tremendous amount of energy and they exhale a tremendous amount of energy. And that's Allah The reality of it is Allah unlocking for them the who. When they unlock that who their breath is like a fire, tremendous amount of energy comes from their breathing. When the nazar of the shaykh when they're sitting and making tafakkur that's why they're making tafakkur. Is that when we're praying, As salamu alaykum, ayyuhan nabi wa ibadullahi salihin? In the salah, you did not close the salah yet. So Allah, Allah is telling us, give them salams. Give Prophet salams in, in, in present tense, wa ibadullahi salihin, that they may be present or not present, but you are to give them greetings. In the salah, then you give your salams and close your salah. What secret is that, that you are facing, who are you facing and why Allah wants you to give salams because it's the best of manners. For one day you should see in your salah you have been trained with good manners, you're giving Prophet salams in present tense and who are Ibadullahi Salihin. So then the tafakkur comes and teaches that, Ya Rabbi from that reality let me always to be in the presence of Ibadullahi Salihin. Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. And Allah says, This is the best of company because I'm with them. If you really connect your heart and you're always with Salihin and always with Salihin, and they begin to take you slowly into the associations of Nabiin, Siddiqeen, and Nabiin, of course, then Allah is with them and you begin to feel that ruhaniyat and the divinely presence of what Allah wants the servant to feel. So it's like a rope that comes, you can't say, I'm going to just connect with Allah that's arrogant. And you can't say, I'm just going to connect with Sayyidina Muhammad because again we're just you know in training wheels. So then Allah Ati Allah, Ati Rasulu Ulul Amri Minkum, then keep the company of the ulama and the ulul am, the ulul am whom their practice and their knowledge is, is real, not they have book knowledge whom their hearts are real and their hearts are containers of reality. Not somebody who speaks from his head about somebody else's heart is a big danger. Big danger when you talk and you listen to somebody who's speaking from his head about somebody else's heart and somebody else's achievements. But to keep the company of whom their own hearts Allah made it to be a container for reality. So when we keep them, meditate and contemplate to be in their company that begins to bring the fires. So they're practicing their breath, breathing, then the fires of the shaykh that I know that you're in front of me and I don't need to see you. I just need to know that I'm always in your presence and that your nazar is always upon me. The more you believe and perceive the nazar of the shaykh is always looking at you, the more that nazar becomes powerful. And that constriction they're asking about is when the nazar comes, it comes jalali not jamali. So when the nazar comes you feel like you're having a heart attack because now the jalali presence is, is entering into that space and you feel like your chest is going to crack. 
and you just breathe through that on nothing and just keep breathing. Breathing says, it's better for me to die Ya Rabbi, it's okay, I'll die. Not get scared, oh God scared, my heart was beating, I stopped. No, because this way was mawt qabl al mawt. What are you scared from death for? And why all the ones you're dead? You're probably better off alive, you can do more, more than be dead, you're just another corpse in the ground. So Allah says, okay, well, I don't need you right now, stay with do what you're doing. So then they overcome the fear of death. And then the nazar come, they feel a very strong contraction and then expansion. When it eases up there's an expansion and the contraction and expansion is the growth. With every contraction they're bringing up a level and then there's an ease. There's a tightening and then an ease. How to keep it is how to keep the respect of the nazar. That my shaykh is watching me at all times, whatever I'm doing. If you think you escaped his nazar, you have lost yourself. <clears throat> There's not a place that their nazar cannot enter. And most likely when you're doing something wrong, the angels are sending out emails to them. That they're doing something wrong, keep your nazar and they're watching. So as much as the servant wants and these are jasus al qalb If you accompany them you understand they know a lot of things and they don't say anything. For their students they may know many things and their training from Allah from Prophet and from awliyaullah is there's no permission to say anything. So you think, oh he doesn't say anything, he doesn't know anything, no he may know a lot. But he's trained not to speak at all, it's not his place to, to reveal what Allah wants to conceal. So it's not about, you know, go and say something or do this or that, no, no, we're not here to, to punish people, this is Allah's, in Allah's hand. But to train them that you're being watched, do you understand that? The more they keep the understanding they're being watched. Every time they get angry an email is sent, down, they're watching. Now I have a nice ring camera for the center. If you pass through the camera it sends me a, a notification. You think ring has it and Allah doesn't have it? As soon as your temperature goes up, something in your character goes up, they send a notification that his temperature just went up, his akhlaq is changing and something's happening. Then those whom are training for the reality, those who don't want the reality they just enjoy the, you know, the food and the companionship, that's no problem. That's a different group of people. You'll get your training in the grave. It's a bit more intense, I think about 70,000 times more intense in the grave. Because then everybody's going for khalwa, everyone going to be trained in the grave. Those who want the training now, they say, no, no Ya Rabbi I don't want the hard stuff, let me do it now. Then they understood, keep the nazar. The shaykh is watching me, he's, he's uh, watching everything I'm doing and then they have been given technologies to understand. They understand and their soul understands. Their soul is from Allah's Divinely secrets. Don't think the soul is not, is not uh, capable. Their soul can be many places and every place as much as Allah wants their soul to be. And their soul doesn't even have to physically notify them because it has already a macro code in which it has to do different things. Can you imagine being notified physically on tens of millions of commands throughout the day? <laughs> you see the person like completely like a lunatic. I think it was with God, Evan, who was the one? They played God in a movie and he was doing emails and Bruce then he just Almighty. started to answer everyone's Bruce emails. Almighty. Huh? Bruce Almighty Yeah, Bruce Almighty. <laughs> he just started saying no, no, no or said he's going to yes, put yes on every all email all that came in. No. So the soul has, a, has a, an ability from Allah Allah's Divine the Ocean dressed the soul with Divinely secrets and Divinely Qudra. Not anything understood from the, the physical world. Their physicality is not even in need to know it. But these lofty souls, these souls that are Rabbaniyoon, Allah gave the soul fulqul mashhoon, they're loaded with, with realities of what the soul is capable of doing by Allah's izzat and might. So yes, no doubt that soul is monitoring and checking and, and, and ga ga gauging the temperature, the activity. Then the student began to understand like the story of Shaykh Abdul Qadir, go kill the chicken where you don't think Allah will see. Everyone went out to kill their chicken, one student stood there 
And he said, why are you not doing what I ask you to do? He said, is there somewhere I'm going to actually go that Allah is not watching me? He said, okay now you're ready. All the other ones are running around looking for a place where Allah <laughs> won't see them. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Yeah. When you truly believe that they're watching, Prophet definitely watching, only Allah watching, angels are watching, the jinn are watching, everyone's watching, it's just you don't know it. So then your life is like, uh, what's the Truman Show? Where he's in a bubble <laughs> and everybody else is on television. So your life is like that. Even your descendants in heaven are watching. Because this life and one of the realities of this life, you're like the Truman Show. All your descendants are sitting up like that, wow, what, what, what is he doing? Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> so they're watching. When I truly understood that, then my, my, my khuluq and my character would then be based on that, I can't do like that, I can't say like that, they're watching. I, I can't do like that, I can't. They start to correct themselves, correct themselves. The more they correct themselves, the more they enter into the oceans of Allah's sincerity. And Allah's gift on sincerity, then He bestows from His bounty and His treasures upon their souls, inshaAllah. Well, I think we have time for one for more. <laughs> So the power of the breath. Yeah. <coughs> Can you please ask Mawlana about the opening, the openings one experiences, i.e. heating a face, are some, uh, some tajallis one off or should we feel all these in every session? Is somebody doing the gardening at 10 o'clock at night? Is this like real? We're trying to talk and I, and I hear there's like a gardener outside at 10 o'clock at night with, this, with the blower. Only, only happens around here. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Can you please ask Mulana about the openings of one experiences, i.e., heating of the face? Are some tajallis one off, or should we feel all these in every session? No, the, again, the, the striving for uh, the, the carrot and a stick. The concept of the carrot and a stick is that you put the treasure that somebody wants on a stick in front of them so that you create a forward movement. If Allah was to bestow everything based on our actions we would do nothing. We'd actually just sit there meditate and all day long illusions and delusions would begin. What Allah grants is a khashf and hal. So these two realities is you may be doing your tafakkur, your contemplation, you may be in salah, you may be in zikr, <laughs> Allah open a trailer like a show from a movie, <laughs> wow <laughs> and then it goes away. And then you keep trying to do practices to catch it again, catch it again, wrong. It's not that you chase those things but continue your sincere actions that made Allah happy with you to grant you that. Not you try to chase, now let me see another trailer, Ya Rabbi let me get… No, no, no because Allah's not on demand where you make a request and Allah says, okay I'm listening to you my servant, astaghfirullah. It's we are the servant of Allah So trace back to what were you doing consistently that made Allah so happy? Some say, oh so many things have stopped for me, yeah because you stopped, you stopped all your practices, you stopped your meditation, you stopped all the things that you were doing. You thought you reached to a place so high and that's no, okay nothing else is coming now. So then the tariqah comes and says to be annihilated in a face that I'm not searching for those Ya Rabbi and I go back to my sincere practices and lo and behold Allah was surprised and sent His khash. And He doesn't want you to chase it and don't ask for it because then the relationship becomes something that not, pro not proper. So we said before like you come home, you kiss your love one and your children and it's a sign of love. But if they line up and say, give me five bucks, <laughs> give me five bucks and then you have to pay everybody to, to get a greeting, it's, it's a different relationship. So Allah doesn't want the servant asking for these things. So you do what you had to do out of sincerity, I will give from my gift the way I want to give it. And same for the hal, they do their zikr, they do their practices and Allah may send them into a hal. 
in which they feel energies, they feel emotions, they feel all sorts of experiences and they're not to chase it. So Imam Ali said, I annihilated even my annihilation, means I reached to a point in which I continuously annihilated myself, I'm not worthy Ya Rabbi, I'm not chasing that. Don't chase like, oh they came to me, they gave me a sword, they gave me a juppa, they gave me a crown because then your nafs is entering into that and you're now making those images to come. That I'm sitting there, they're giving me this, they're giving me that, it's all delusion because you should have annihilated. If the opening of your heart is opening and they're bringing things say, Alhamdulillah I'm not that servant, I'm not worthy of that, I'm nothing, I'm no one, I'm no one, I'm no one and that's what they want to hear. Otherwise the state of delusion enters and they begin to, oh my gosh I got this, I got this and the first thing they want to do when they come to shaykh, do you know I had a dream, I sat on a chair like this, they came and they gave me a jubba, they gave me an arsh, they gave me a sword, they gave me a crown. So I said, okay well then take my job, I'll leave. <laughs> it's not our way, it's to come and say, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Even you saw the seven heavens with your own eyeballs open, I'm nothing. I said, nothing, I don't know anything, I don't know anything because that's keeping our cup empty. If my cup is empty, Allah fills it with immense joys and pleasures from this universe, from unseen universes and creation. So the concept of keeping the cup empty, nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and annihilate even in my ocean of annihilation inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.